Newfoundland is blessed with a superabundance of water. It's everywhere, countless lakes and ponds, thousands of brooks and rivers. Some roll gently to the sea. Others rush and roar in a frenzied race to reach the North Atlantic. The river, a blend of startling power and delicate beauty. A challenge and a thrill. But perhaps those who know and love the river best of all are the salmon fishermen. Hour after hour, day after day, casting, waiting, hoping for that sudden explosion of energy, that lightning leap, when the king of the river takes your fly. Sleek, full of power and beauty, the Atlantic salmon draws anglers from all over the world. It's also the tastiest fish in the sea and fetches commercial fishermen a tidy profit. Its life history is an incredible saga in itself, migrating from river to ocean, roaming the North Atlantic for years, spending part of its life in Greenland, then back home to our own ice-infested waters. The Atlantic salmon is continually running the gauntlet, not only here at sea where it faces the predators and the nets of the fishermen, but also later in the river where it must battle its way over waterfalls, through pollutants and past anglers and poachers. Everyone wants this magnificent fish. It's important to our commercial fishermen. It means a lot to anglers. Catch restrictions have helped protect the salmon, but is this enough? Some say no, that we must give nature a hand, especially here on rivers such as the exploits where the salmon go to breed. Well, for 70 years, I guess we just Looked, uh, we actually didn't even see this river. It was used for the paper business and that was it. And then uh, not too many years ago, a few people had a, an idea that, look, this river has a vast potential. And I have to give credit to the Federal Department of Fisheries personnel for that. They came and showed us that there was a fantastic potential on this river for salmon. So then we got a few people interested to have a look at it, formed an organization, and we haven't looked back since. The biggest obstacle, the Grand Falls, a barrier that kept salmon from inhabiting the vast upper reaches of the Exploits watershed. This cauldron of white water was the end of the line for salmon migrating upstream. But the Federal Fisheries people had already built this partial fishway on an experimental basis, and it had worked. The first part of the ladder is just a conventional salmon ladder. Then they get up into uh, a cage at the head of the ladder where they can swim into a removable cage. And we lift them out uh, and li lo lift them aboard a specialized truck, a truck that's designed specifically to transport salmon. And we can take upwards of 200 salmon at a time in that truck. And then we truck them to Noel Paul. This year we will, uh, we will truck 4,000 salmon to Noel Paul, but that's how many we need to get approximately eight million eggs that we will strip from the salmon late in October, early November. 
Does this uh, transfer now by truck uh, hurt the salmon at all? I mean, they, they have to find their way up the ladder and then be lifted aboard and carried by truck? Our mortality rate in truck and salmon up there is zero. We, out of 4,000 salmon, we may lose four. So uh, there's no problem with trucking. Not all the salmon are transferred to Noel Paul. Many are released a few miles upstream. There they'll fend for themselves and hopefully populate the middle stretches of the exploits. The others are trucked from here to Noel Paul Brook, where later in the fall the eggs are taken from the females, fertilized and incubated over winter. In the spring, a new generation of salmon. It's difficult to believe that in time, some of these tiny creatures could weigh 20 or 30 pounds. It's quite a nursery they have here at Noel Paul Brook. Tanks, trays, tubes everywhere, water being maneuvered from place to place as the team of biologists and technicians test and sample and measure and pamper the hordes of miniature salmon in their charge. Here under these controlled conditions, survival from egg to fry is quite a bit higher than in nature. Still, tremendous quantities of fry are needed. But once the fish are released in the rivers, they must live by the law of the wild. It's survival of only the fit and the lucky. Chuck Bourgeois is the biologist in charge of the nursery at Noel Paul. Last year we expanded our incubation facilities and we test stocked. This year we're expecting about two and a quarter million fry. Hopefully next year we'll get in the order of six to seven million fry. And I guess the idea of it is to increase the survival of, of the fry over the natural condition. Oh yes, that's where we're getting our boost. That's why enhancement works so well, is that increase from egg to fry survival. So out of the millions of fry now that leave Noel Paul, what, what percentage could possibly make it back as adult salmon in years to come? Oh, generally I suppose you could talk a rough figure of about 10%, but we're expecting about 19, 91, 92, an annual river production of 100,000 anadromous Atlantic salmon on the exploits watershed. That must make it one of the biggest salmon rivers or the most productive salmon rivers in the world if you reach that. In terms, yes, it'll be quite high. It will rank amongst the highest. Quite a goal, isn't it? Oh, it is, and it's a very achievable one, too. When we arrive on the scene in the morning, the fry are there in our collection facilities, and we have to have some way of estimating how many fry that are there. So what we do is a volumetric estimation. You'll notice the chaps down there with the graduated cylinders, they'll fill a thousand milliliter cylinder up with 900 mils of water and add 100 mils of fry. We will do a certain number of counts. We count, try to count one out of ten, and we use that as an estimate for the number of fry that we collect that day. So within two or three or five percent, you, you know exactly how many fry you're putting in there. Oh, yes, we do, yes. And so the young salmon are made ready for the strangest trip of their lives, a helicopter ride to rivers far in the interior of Newfoundland. We usually head down over the hill about about six o'clock in the morning, and we like to get our first trip in the air before seven, and our goal is to have all our fry gone by midday, lunch hour, 12 o'clock, because we find that the fry in the collection facilities are just swimming around and tiring themselves out, so we like to get them out in the river beds where they can take up their natural position, hiding under rocks and resting and feeding. In a few days, millions of salmon fry are loaded aboard the helicopters. Their great adventure begins. Victoria River is uh, oh, part of the upper watershed. It flows into Red Indian Lake. It was diverted uh, into the Beta Spear system for power production, but the river that remains is some of the best river iron habitat that exists on the Exploits watershed. Uh, matter of fact, it's a stretch of tributary that we're quite excited about. We believe we will get very high production out of it. There's tremendous potential, excellent rearing, good spawning, 
sort of riffle, pool, riffle type substrate. Sierra Lima Foxtrot is helicopter Tangazula Mike. Tangazula Mike, it's Sierra Lima Foxtrot. Uh, Roger Joe, uh, I've got two more loads to, uh, or correction, two more trips to, uh, uh, set out, and, uh, then we should be heading back to the hatchery. Uh, do they have many in the containers yet, or, or am I gonna have to shut down when I get back? Uh, looks like, uh, the boys got another load ready for you, Dale. As soon as you get back, uh, I guess they'll load you right up, and, uh, then you can be on your way again. Okay, Chuck. So it should be about another two trips each, I guess, before we're finished with the day. Yeah, that's affirmative. Uh, looks like about a couple of trips more, and, uh, and that should just about do it for today. All right, sounds good. That's it uh, for a total for today. I guess we must be after moving uh, around 350 or so. Yeah, well, hope, hope be the same tomorrow, I guess. I guess we'll see you when we get back there. Okay, Roger. See you for lunch. Helicopters are costly, but they're fast and efficient, and you can land and release fry in places otherwise inaccessible. In 10 days or so, the Noel Paul team delivered millions of fry to Victoria River and other streams all over the exploits watershed. It's amazing the amount of good salmon habitat there is in Newfoundland, the number of rivers where sea-run salmon have not yet been able to become established. This work could change all that. General strategy is within our sections that we have mapped out, we try to drop fry a predetermined number. In Victoria, it ranges from 10 to 20,000 per drop site every quarter mile on opposite sides of the river. So that way we give the fry lots of area to find and they can go out and seek their food and set up their territories as they normally do and carry on with the freshwater phase of life. From here the fry will fan out, explore the pools and ripples, feed and grow. Till one day the call of the sea will pull them downstream to Notre Dame Bay and perhaps on to Greenland. Hopefully some will make it back home again to lay their eggs and begin a new generation of salmon somewhere here in the upper reaches of the Exploits River. They're an absolutely amazing fish. When you take a, a fish that can go to sea, probably as far as Greenland, find its way back here and to the, get to the headwaters of the Exploits, that fish has to battle for over 250 miles, and it will still do that and not eat. So it has to be one of the most amazing uh, creatures in the, in, in the water. Has your dream been fulfilled yet, or do you st still have a lot of work to do? Oh, no, we still have a lot of work to do. I, uh, my dream will be fulfilled when we see the first salmon going over the dam in Millertown. That opens up a vast watershed. When they go over that dam, then, uh, then they're home free. We're home free then. And you've got salmon right from, from Botwood uh, to the uh, Long Range Mountains region. Really. You will have salmon, yes, from Botwood to 40 miles west of the Burgio Highway. That's the headwaters of the exploits. The first 64,000 fry that we planted this spring were, 64 mi were 40 miles west of the Burgio Highway. It's going to cost some money, but you're sure the investment will be worth it? We know the investment is going to be worth it. And the various government agencies, too, they, they are now realize that this is no longer a dream.
the Exploits River near Bishop's Falls. Meet Cyril Stone, angler. I didn't know, you know, done all the painting and that painting house and all that. I didn't know now until September or late in August. Everything goes slack now. One friend of mine was going to take up a storm windows one summer and the, the fish came up before he got him off. And by the time the fishing was over, he said, why take him off now? It's nearly winter again. <laughs> it's nearly winter again. There's only another month I got to put him back on, so he left him on. So that's what's going on now. No, there's fish still in the pool. How are you doing, Will? Very yeah. Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller. Yahoo! <laughs> all up, all them up, Bill. Boys want to see him. Right, right full of sea lice, no? Is he? Yeah. Right full of sea lice. When I started out fishing, I had. Just ordered me all bamboo, I bought of a good drummer store, 49 cents. I made the highs on the uh, safety pins and taped them on with electrical tape and an old reel. And then the warden would go down to the mill then, and, and my father would buy a license for me down at the mill. He'd go around down the mill and sell a license, dollar each. Or you'd be fishing over there for two weeks before you see the warden. And when he come over, he'd sit down on the rack there and write out the license. That's how we used to buy our license. The exploits has never been regarded as much of a salmon stream. Certainly not in the same league as the Humber or Gander. With obstructions at Bishop's and the insurmountable Grand Falls, angling was confined to the lower stretch of the river. And even there, there were only a few choice places. One of them was Bucky's Rock, named after Bucky Hennifer, who practically lived there when the salmon were running. That's where the Stone family is headed now. There's Cyril, Cyril's grandson, Christopher, and Cyril's son, Tony. Tony left Bishop Falls to work out west for several years. Now he's back, and this river is one of the reasons he returned to Newfoundland. With all the fishing I'd done, I took Tony with me most of the time. <coughs> he's five years old. Well, he wasn't, but a month short of five, first salmon he hooked. We were out there, the river was a little different than it is now. We were out there fishing one of the, one of the rattles over there. Mr. Anifer was here on, on the point that morning. Tony was standing up in the back of the boat, fishing short line. All of a sudden, zzz, <laughs> he had a fish on, so I reached for him. I was scared he went over the end of the boat. Mr. Anifer saw it, and he said, don't touch that rod. And I said, I'm not touching the rod, I'm just holding him. So that was his first time. Well, from that, I guess he was hooked. I often say, uh, we don't hook the fish, the fish hooks us. Down the river, Silver Cosable. Here, try that, no? It's Silver Cosable. When I got over there last night, that's what Abe Slade was looking for. We're using it down by the bridge. Having a lot of luck with it too. So I tied up a couple of them. And Wes using that silver doctor. It's years since I saw that used down here. See all the fellas used to use it years ago. With, I looked at them with black hair and those just same. I like some yeah. dark hair. Maybe it's better too. And dark hair. Yeah, yeah well, I'm gonna try that afternoon. Salmon fishing, a sport, an art, a passion, a way to relax for Tony and his friends. Myself and my buddies come over and sometimes we spend all weekend here and there's times that we just spend, you know, a few hours and you're lucky enough you get your two and you'll hit a few and have a few on and lose them and stuff like that, you know, but it is rather important to me and I really enjoyed it and I, I really missed it when I was out west for that, well, I guess it was pretty close to five years I was out there. And uh, I just kept thinking about getting back here, you know, and now that I'm back around, I don't think I'll ever leave again, especially, you know, when the salmon are, are running good. And the river seems to be cleaned up now a little bit after that flood we had back in 83, and the fish are healthy, and like I said, with that enhancement program on the go now, we're going to have a terrible amount of fish here in a few years, so it should be good angling for everybody, you know. Rose, see him? I saw it. That's what I did, Rose, right out of the end of Put it on my hook, 
Maybe something else up there. Now come again, right on the table. Right on the corner of the roof. These three fish come to one time. Oh, it's harder playing them out in the boat than it is in on shore, eh? Takes a little longer. Indeed it is, Cyril. Hooking and landing an Atlantic salmon, even a small one, is a magic moment. A thrill of a lifetime for people of all ages and all walks yeah, of life. I got one down below. My last one. What are you tying on now? Do you know the problem about this salmon? Please, we can't hook them. I don't know. That's what I like to know. <laughs> What now one there that I got a seven on the but I go there with him. I don't know what kind of fly in because I got that many nobody knows me when they put him. I don't know what he knows. Oh, sir. Oh. Tony could fish as well when he was ten or twelve as he can now. And we got young fellas here, little fellas that are just big enough to hold up a ride. They can cast a line with some of the best fishermen on the river. You'd be surprised. If you see some of the fellas here, 10, 12 years old, casting line, you wouldn't believe it. Tell me about the little fellow out in the boat there now. Little fellow out Stephen? Hmm. Oh, Stephen's just four years old. His father takes him down here just about every day and he comes down with him. So he's, he's playing the salmon, or at least he's played them. Oh, he, he's played salmon. He's four years old and he's played salmon. More line. You can catch more than that. And so, each summer, you'll find the Stone family here. Cyril, Tony, and now Christopher. He hasn't been down too much this year, and, but he did come down and hook a couple fish, and he lost both of them this year. So, I mean, when you're talking to a young fellow, 10 or 11 years old, I know I, I used to get discouraged a bit easy, but Dad was always there saying, boy, you know, this salmon fishing is, you just got to be here. And as times I came out the river with him, and I wanted to go, but he wasn't leaving because he's like I am now, so. Maybe Christopher will catch the salmon fishing bug. I don't know, and if he don't, well, you know, I, I don't. I really can't force him to come down here. But I know it's something I thoroughly enjoy, and I hope he, he starts to like it too. You know, I think the best teacher I, I would say is let Dad show him. You know, because you know, after all, he's he's the expert in, in our family. So Christopher, if he can learn off him and be half as good as him, I'll be pleased with it anyway. You know. the lightning leap of a salmon. The thrill of landing one of these magnificent fish. The dream that this mighty river will one day be one of the greatest salmon producing streams in the world. The salmon have been given a helping hand, mother nature a nudge, and it's worked. 
the tiny fry hatched here at Noel Paul have returned as adult salmon. There are many more fish in the river and in the bay. For Terry and the others, the results prove the dream is coming true. Fantastic results. This river, 10, 12 years ago, there was less than 2,000 salmon a year coming into this river. Last year, over 20,000 salmon came through here. We hope by 1992 that we'll have an annual return to this river of 100,000 salmon a year. Now, our river capacity, the ultimate capacity of the exploit system, it has a rearing capacity of 300,000 salmon annual return a year, self-sustaining. It can self-sustain that once we have the stocks built to the point we want them. Sounds like a pretty good investment. Well, it's one of the best investments the government can ever make because they're going to get an annual return forever because of the increased activity on this river, the um, increased activity with the commercial fishermen in the Bay of Exploits. And it'll be there forever if we look after it.